what to say of this place, what to call it. Through time, it has had many names. It was Pematic to some of the early native people. It was Sur de Mont National Monument. It was almost Mount Desert National Park. It did become Lafayette National Park, and today, well, today many mistakenly call it Arcadia. <laughs> no, there's no R, but there are magnificent mountains scoured by ice millennia past. Constant sea working its ceaseless saltwater massage on the granite shore. Gentle brooks whispering secrets we all might learn. Lovely lakes and ponds, their mirrored waters doubling their beauty. The creatures who live on them, in them, around them, above them. Mountains, sea, brooks, ponds, animals, birds, history, people. These are Acadia. Then, now, always. Hello, I'm Jack Perkins, and this is Acadia National Park. What is it that makes Acadia such a special place? Theodore Roosevelt knew when the park was first founded in 1916. It is our one eastern national park. Its striking ocean frontage makes it unlike any other that we have. It will furnish a health-giving playground, greatly needed by multitudes of hard-working men and women. It constitutes also a wildlife sanctuary under national guardianship at a point where such a sanctuary is greatly needed. Millions of people today also know the wonders of Acadia. As they take time to explore and discover its secrets, Acadia becomes a friend. And as we shall see later, it needs friends. Now, what is the best way to come to know this friend? Head out to the Park Loop Road. Slow down to enjoy the views and say hello to some of Acadia's highlights. Sand Beach, unique in this land of rocky coasts, tempts many to test its chilly waters. Thunder Hole. Thundering if the push of surf and tide happen to be right. Interesting at any time, but potentially hazardous. Prudence and caution urged. On around Otter Point, the classic rock-bound coast of Maine. Here you leave the rocky coast and enter the spruce fir forest. As you approach Jordan Pond, admire the craftsmanship of one of the carriage road gatehouses. At the Jordan Pond House, having tea and popovers while enjoying the scenery is a long-standing tradition. And then the mountain among mountains, motor to the top of Cadillac, highest point on the eastern coast of the United States, the spot where, at certain times of the year, the sun first lights the continental U.S. Well, you've done the loop road and climbed Cadillac. You've seen the highlights, 
but Acadia invites you as a wanderer or a wanderer to get to know it better. For the wanderer, a carriage ride from Wildwood Stables allows you to enjoy the carriage roads as John D. Rockefeller Jr. envisioned them when he built them. Explore the broken stone roads on your own, by foot, by four feet, or by a couple of wheels. Or leave the roads behind entirely and take a hike. With 125 miles of trails, you're sure to find something to suit your interest and ability. Strenuous climbs up ladder trails using iron rungs offer unique challenges for those who are prepared and not faint-hearted. Easy strolls provide scenic views along the rocky coast. These carefully crafted trails and paths, most constructed more than 100 years ago, help you experience the essence of Acadia. As you hike, Stay on the marked trail to protect fragile trailside areas and protect you. There are other ways for the wanderer to explore Acadia on your own. And for the wanderer, there are many opportunities to learn. Head out on a ranger-led boat cruise to see the park from a different perspective. So I hope you folks continue to enjoy our, our coastal history, our coastal main islands. Visit Little Cranberry Island, the village of Islesford, where the park offers a museum of island life. Take a hike with a park naturalist. I used to think you had to go out west to see beautiful rocks, till I came to Acadia, and they are everywhere. If you like rocks, this is certainly a good place to see them. Take a look at this evergreen and notice how long the needles are. And I also want you to notice how many needles come out of the same place. That makes it a pine. All right, so you look down into the tide pools and sometimes you just never know what you're gonna find. Here's a little sea urchin. And with all these different things that are in the tide pools, you may wonder, well, why are they so important? Discover not only Acadia's natural wonders, but its cultural treasures and rich history. As we're enjoying this beautiful stone bridge, it's just one of 17 stone bridges. When John D. Rockefeller Jr. built these bridges and the carriage road system, he was adding to the legacy that's been built on by others and it's been left for us to preserve and to pass on to future generations. Give them a big round of applause. They're and what about rangers. those future generations? Well, they can become junior rangers or attend programs designed just for our younger wanderers. Okay, so why do we look at this stuff close up? Take a close look. What do you see? All those little things we saw with all the different legs, the jointed legs and the eyes. So when you look at these things close up, you get to know their habits and their habitat. You want to take care of them, right? Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Taking care of the park is something we all can do. If one of the things a wanderer wonders is, how could I help Acadia? Well, there's an answer. The answer is a group named Friends of Acadia. Founded back in the 80s, Friends of Acadia has raised millions of dollars over the years, money for Acadia to preserve the carriage roads in perpetuity, to bring back to life the network of hiking trails, many fallen into impassable disrepair, to help fund, with great support from the L.L. Bean Company, the innovative development of the island-wide bus network, carrying visitors in and around Acadia in propane-powered vehicles that themselves help Acadia by keeping the air clean. Friends of Acadia carries on the great heritage of the founders of Acadia, 
private citizens protecting public lands, not for themselves, but for us all. Through time, our relationship with Acadia continues to grow. We begin to learn its secrets, and in return, it provides us solitude, recreation, inspiration. As President Roosevelt said, we need Acadia, but it also needs us to ensure that it remains Acadia, always. <laughs>